can't even turn on my phone without being reminded of the lie that I am alone and broken, unsuccessful. And I, I can't always talk to my friends because they've got expectations that I may. Today's lesson is another chronicle in Paul's missionary journey. In this series, we see Paul in a number of challenging situations. This lesson gives us an opportunity to examine the five habits of Paul, a successful advocate for God. Habits are reoccurring thoughts, feelings, and actions that we engage in routinely. Habits determine the type of person we are, the type of Christian we are, the type of advocate we are. Today, during the video lesson, you will see subtext on Paul's habits. Compare your habits to Paul and how your habits impact your relationship with God, with your family, with your career and community. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. But others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. A few men became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in the city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him into court. This man, they charged, is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, If you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names, and your own law. Settle the matter yourselves. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Chencheria because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back. 
if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. As you contemplate Paul's habits this week, remember to ask yourself, have you explored your purpose so that your mission in terms of God, in terms of your family, in terms of your career and community are clear? Or are you still unclear in developing your mission? Ask yourself, are you building a social network that can support your journey, your advocacy, your relationship for, with God, with your family, with your career and community? Or is your network a hindrance? Ask yourself, do you have the strategic focus and the persistence needed to accomplish your mission in terms of God, in terms of family, in terms of your career and community, or are you easily distracted? To be someone that you did not create. And finally, do you have the courage to speak truth to power even at a time that is inconvenient for you, but convenient for God, for family, for your career and community? Or do you always seem to find a way to justify sitting quietly? Have a great week. Bye.